Hello everyone this is part 24 of what if Naruto was adopted by Kakashi, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Naruto groaned as he tried to put on his best clothing, he still felt a little tired from all the training he had today but he did promise Hanata that he would be there. He just wished he had more of a break, plus he hated the formal clothing. They looked a lot like Hugo wear with some slight alterations of course, but still, he was never comfortable in them. The only reason he had these was because his dad felt that if he ever needed them, they would come in handy. He hated it when his dad was right about this kind of stuff. He also had to pull off his mask as he stuffed it inside of a pocket. He felt naked without it but he felt that it wouldn't go over well. He decided to wear it to the Hugo compound but pull it off when he got inside. Besides he used to run around without one there before, even if it was when he had been a little kid. He sighed as he got ready, this was for his girlfriend, at least that's what he kept telling himself. Besides, he shouldn't be too nervous. His mind went back to the training, so far it hadn't been too bad although summoning was a lot harder than his dad made it look. He had spent the entire time trying to summon, at first he got nothing but legless tadpoles, then tadpoles with legs, the best he did was when he summoned a more red toad called, Gamakichi. The guy was kind of a pain in the ass, but at least he was smarter than the only other toad he had managed to summon. Apparently the younger brother to Gamakichi, a yellow one named Gamatatsu. Now, Naruto knew that he wasn't what you called, book smart, but even to him, he could tell that Gamatatsu, although much nicer than his brother, was a bit on the slow side. Plus the two kept demanding snacks of all things. He really wanted to call up one of those cool battle toads that Jiraiya could do. Those would be great in battle and would really help out when he fought that guy in the match. Well he still had 29 days left to get to that point and he wasn't going to stop until he could get a huge toad. Anyways he had better hurry or else he was going to be running late. He quickly made his way to the Hugo compound, taking the shortcut of jumping over buildings but since the compound didn't have any high building anywhere near it, he had to walk the last leg. He kept his mask on when he got to the gate guards, he bet that if he showed up without they might not know who he was. They usually saw him with the mask anyway. They let him in easily enough as he was expected, and when he was in he was led to the main house. He pulled off his mask and placed it in a pocket, he really felt weird walking out in the open without it, even here. It was Neji that met up with him, the older boy was in traditional Hugo garb. It was the first time that he had seen Neji dressed up like this, he looked like any other Hugo, even the headband was changed from his forehead protector to a silk band to cover the mark hidden under it. After years of knowing this clan, Naruto knew all about that seal that was placed on the branch members. Personally he hated that thing and felt it was stupid. No other clan had that, or a caste system like they had. But it wasn't his place, at least yet. When he became Hokage he planned to try and change things. Hey Neji, how are things? Naruto asked the other boy. Fine, Neji said simply as he led him on. So, how's Tenten? Naruto asked wondering how the girl was. He caught Neji's head snap up slightly and was that a slight blush. Maybe something had happened between the two, he knew that there was something between the two members of Team Guy. Maybe he could squeeze a little information out of him during dinner. This might be fun after all. She's doing better, she'll be helping me train for the last exam. He told him. Naruto whistled, man you're lucky. Spending all that time alone with a pretty girl, just the two of you. Kind of makes me wish that me and Hanata-chan were. Finish that sentence in any perverted way with my cousin and you'll find all your chakra paths shut down. Neji said with a slight tick on his skull. Although he accepted Naruto and Hanata's relationship, that didn't mean he wanted to hear about certain private things. Plus as long as he treated her with respect and didn't take things too far, he could live with it. Naruto knew that Neji couldn't permanently do what he said, but he was sure the older boy would try and it would hurt. So he kept his mouth shut as he was led into the main dining hall. He had only seen it but never actually ate here before. It was a large rectangular room, with a long table on it. You were to sit on cushions and he was led to one of them. He sat down as Neji took a spot further down the table. Moments later Neji's father, 
Hisashi came in and nodded to Naruto slightly as he took a spot across his son. From the looks of it, it was customary to have any branch members sit at the far end of the table, it was just another little thing the main house did to keep the branch members in their place. Naruto put that as yet another reason he heated the caste system. Then the large double doors opened up as Hyashi walked in first, looking at poised and noble as he usually did. Naruto wondered how much training it took to get a person to look that stiff and proper all the time. Most likely years growing up in this environment did that, he was glad that Hanata wasn't that stiff. Speaking of with the Hyuga sisters were up first, he noticed that they were in more fashionable attire. Hanabi he noticed was looking her best but it was Hanata that drew his attention. She was in fancy blue robes with a waistband and he could see how it gave her a slight hourglass figure. He was certain that she would later grow into that figure even more but he was happy with it all the same. Her face had a slight makeup job done on it, he had never seen her in makeup. It made her look more like royalty when he looked at her. Slight eyeliner, with a light red lips and blush added to her cheeks. She caught him staring and the blushed cheeks didn't need the makeup to make them seem rosy anymore. They all took their seats as other branch members came in to serve the dinner. It was a lot fancier than the kind of stuff Naruto was used to but he tried his best to use his good table manners. His dad taught him them in case he might actually need them at some point. So far the dinner didn't seem to be anything to worry about, pleasant conversations about the training and the upcoming tune and exams mainly. Naruto felt a bit more relaxed by the time the meal ended but it was then that Hyashi seemed to get even more serious, which Naruto thought couldn't even be possible. Naruto, as I understand it you are now dating my eldest daughter, Hyashi simply said. He never liked to dance around a subject and it was time to get things out in the open. He noticed Hanata blush a bit from being put on the spot but he went on. As you know, you have been a friend of his clan for years. But a friend and courting not only a main family member, but my own daughter are two separate things. Given my daughter's station it is not a simple manner. Although she hasn't had a suitor picked out by the clan elders, if you wish to continue to see my daughter romantically you'll need to win their approval. What? You mean I got to win over some old guys just to date my girlfriend? Naruto didn't like the sound of this at all. He also missing everyone other than Hyashi wince, Naruto was the least diplomatic person in the world it would seem. Then again not many would yell at the head of the Hyuga clan but this wasn't the best way to deal with the problem. Not for the time being, Hyashi mentally sighed. She's too young to be betrothed but when she reaches that age then you will have to win the respect of the elders. Which Hyashi knew wouldn't be easy. Marriage outside of the clan wasn't common, let alone to the heir of the clan. So then I'll do just that. Naruto never did like people telling him what he could and couldn't do, but there was no way someone was going to tell him he couldn't see Hanata. Naruto what are your intentions towards my daughter? Hyashi said very slowly and very seriously. Naruto was a little taken aback by switch in topic. Ah, well she's my girlfriend what else is there to it? What I mean is what do you plan for with her? Hyashi told him. Is this merely just a fling or do your feelings run a lot deeper? Naruto blushed as he wasn't sure, after all he had only just started to date her. W well, I really, really like her. I mean she's been in my life for so long I can't really see her not in it. She's one of my precious people to me. Hanata could only look in wide-eyed adoration at Naruto's words they made her feel happy to hear such things from Naruto. Hyashi thought about what the boy had said, it would seem that although young, the boy's feelings were starting to be strong. If he seriously wanted to pursue his oldest child then he would need that strength. Even as children, his wife thought they might end up together and she had always been a wise woman. But they both had known the kind of things that Naruto would face if he did want to have a relationship with Hanata. If you do care for my daughter then you have better become someone that no one could turn away, Hyashi told him. If not then it's best you only stay friends at least for her sake. Her sake. Naruto asked confused looking at the others. Hanata and Hanabi seemed to be confused but the others did seem to know what the clan head was talking about. You the elders don't approve of you, and you continue to see her then Hanata will be punished, Hyashi needed for them all to understand the full consequences. She would have the seal placed onto her and put into the branch family by going against the elders. Also if you two still see each other she could face excommunication. Hanata got very pale at that as Hanabi and Neji gave her worried looks. Excommunication was the worst fate for any Hyuga. 
Not only were they to be branded with the seal if they didn't have it, they would be considered, dead, to the clan. They would be kicked out of the compound and all Hugo were to never speak to that person or even acknowledge them ever again. Hanata knew that she would never be able to see her family again, even if she saw Hanabi on the street, Hanabi would be forced to ignore her older sister or face punishment as well. And to those that broke the excommunication, they too could end up facing the same fate. Naruto didn't know what he meant, so Hizashi explained it all to Naruto. Naruto had never known about that and he could see Hanata's worried face. Naruto sat silently as he thought about it all. If he really wanted to date Hanata he would have to really prove himself. He would have to train and become very strong. He already planned on being Hokage. The question was, could he become that before Hanata was old enough? Plus what if he didn't, then what would he do? He knew how important family was and he couldn't let Hanata give up on hers. Naruto looked very solemn when he looked Hyashi in the eyes, I will prove to those old men that I'm the one for Hanata-chan, I promise that. And if you can't, Hyashi asked him sternly. Naruto looked at her and then down at the table, I can't ask her to give up her family. Hyashi nodded his head as he looked to see the worried look on his daughter's face, he didn't like this but he had responsibilities and that took over the responsibility of being a father at times. Then if by that time you can't appease the elders, then you must give up any romantic relationship with Hanata. I won't ask you to never see her again but nothing more than friendship. The rest of dinner was very quiet after that. Elsewhere, there were many hotels in Kanoa, from visiting merchants, to VIPs coming to the village. It was also that each hotel was given a room to a different genin team when the Chunin exams were being held. The rooms were paid by the village as the other villages teams were guests after all but it was also ensured that no hotel would have more than one team. There had been incidents in the past where one team would try and eliminate competition so for security reasons it was to split up the rooms available. In this case, the current one where Baki and his team used was in the central area of the village. Baki had already talked with Kankuro about his loss, it was disappointing to see that not all of them were going into the finals. But then again, that boy in green had some impressive skills he got the feeling there was much more he hadn't seen. In fact some of the Kanoa team had been surprising, although Gara's attention had been on that masked blonde kid. Gara had actually asked, Tell demanded without threat of violence actually, to know more about the boy. Someone had caught the young redhead's attention. Baki pitied that boy, if Gara thought you were interesting it meant your death sentence. But he had other concerns now he was to meet his contact inside the village. When he first met the boy he had been surprised at first that a young Leaf Genin would be a spy and traitor but after that first meeting he saw through the facade. The boy was anything but a boy, behind that pleasant mask he wore, was a very dangerous person. Back he wasn't sure if the boy was even really a Genin the young ninja was too good and too skilled with calm nerves of iron. It was a bit unsettling actually, being in his presence but Baki left his hotel to meet up with his contact. Although he hadn't even noticed the shadow he had picked up. Baki made it to the balcony and waited, he didn't have to wait long before the white-haired boy named Kabuto showed up, silently as ever. I take it there are no problems. Baki asked the young man. He smiled but there was little humor in that smile, it was the kind that actually put the veteran ninja on ease actually. Of course, we're ready to start slowly having your people and mine infiltrating the village. I've set up safe areas and fake papers to get them past the gate, but they must keep a low profile. Also the staging areas are already set up, but we'll wait until the day before to move the men into position. Baki had to admit that when he first heard the plan it was a daring one. So much could go wrong but it was also genius, using the Chunin exams as a cover to have two forces invade a village. But he was worried, using the exams in such a way would ruin their village's reputation. The Chunin exams were a sacred thing and to use them like this, no one would trust Suna or Oto for exams for generations. It would cause many problems in the future. But it was his Kazekage's orders and he would obey, even if this whole affair didn't make sense to him. The Leaf had been their allies for years, true it was a tenuous alliance, originally for mutual support but it was still an alliance which made everything worse, breaking an alliance with their plan, yes no one would trust sooner and their reputation would suffer for it all. Your master Orokimaru, is a very dangerous man but his plan leaves a bad taste in my mouth. He finds it more practical deal with events in the most practical manner, even if it's brutal, treacherous or viewed as, distasteful, by others, Kabuto smirked as he adjusted his glasses. 
But you shouldn't throw that name around, especially in this village. You'll never know who is listening. He cast his gaze to a shadowy area and Baki made a slight move to see with his peripheral vision. Baki then caught the movement of someone fleeing the shadows. Baki saw in his head, he was certain he had slipped away unnoticed. He had been complacent and now it cost him, since it was his mistake it was his duty to correct that. I'll handle him, you better leave before someone else shows up. Very well, Kabuto smirked as he watched Baki leave after the leaf spy. Hanata's room. Naruto and Hanata finally had a moment to themselves, they were in her room and it hadn't changed much since he last saw it. Although the bunny cage was new given her new pet, Haku. He remembered a response he got from Wave when he told Haku what Hanata, named the rabbit. He was flattered that she had done so and was glad to hear how things were going. Haku was also doing much better, although they still couldn't mention certain names just in case. Sure the ninja that delivered mail were totally neutral but that didn't mean they couldn't be ambushed. But still it was nice to hear how things were getting along over there. Although now he felt a lot more relaxed, he hoped he didn't have to go through something like that again anytime soon. They hadn't said anything about the deal that was made over dinner, they just wanted to enjoy their time together. Because they both knew, that they were both thinking that their time together would be very limited. Naruto then noticed Hanata's sigh as she sat on her bed and her shoulders looked like they were bothering her. She kept rolling them now and she was trying not to move her arms he noticed. Hey, are you okay Hanata-chan? Naruto asked as he sat down with her. Oh oh it's nothing, just training with Kurenai-sensei and Anko-sensei is being tough. He laughed it off or tried to. Truth was she was sore all over from just the first day, she knew that Kurenai could be tough but Anko was more strict. Huh. I thought Auntie Anko was training Sakura-chan. Oh that's right you didn't know, Hanata told him how Kurenai and Anko had decided to train the two of them together. She went in on her training, to the running with the weights on, to then sparing, and then Kurenai was having them train in Genjutsu. Mainly to see past them, thanks to her eyes she had a bit of an advantage. With simple ones she managed great, that is as long as her own visual nervous system wasn't affected, although Sakura was surprisingly adept at him too. Well that's great, you'll both get really stronger. I can't wait to see how you both are at the end of a month, he praised her causing her to blush. Then he got an idea, he led her to the center of the bed as she was wondering what he was planning. Of course all kinds of ideas were running through her mind, after all she was alone with the boy she cared for, in her room, and on her bed. So many possibilities, but he wouldn't dare try something so bold while her own family was in the same building would he? Here just relax a bit okay, he said as he got behind her and she felt his hands on her shoulders. She turned as red as a tomato as he did this, then he gently started to work the muscles in her neck and shoulders. It hurt a bit but he was gentle and soon it felt nice, she closed her eyes as she enjoyed the sensation. Naruto had to admit that he was thankful for being able to do this, he had read this kind of thing but to do it in real life was even better. Plus with such short hair she really had a cute back neck. He wanted to move in close and plant a kiss on it. Maybe later, he grinned to himself. At any rate he was proud that she was continue to train so hard, he knew she would be great one day if she kept this up. He thought about how they first met, how afraid and timid she had been. She was still shy but she had grown since then, they both had actually. He couldn't help but chuckle at how things had turned out. W what's so funny? She asked. Nothing, just thinking about how things have turned out. I mean you were my first friend, my best friend and now my girlfriend. He smiled as he remembered their life together up till this point. You know I've been meaning to ask, when did you start to like me more as a friend? Hanata felt her cheeks heat up and was glad he couldn't see her face. I I think since we were little. What? That long? Why didn't you say anything to me? He wanted to know why she had held such feelings for him secret for all this time. I, I I was just afraid to lose you as a friend, Hanata said. W when did you start to feel different towards me? Oh that's easy when we had that get together with everyone at the lake after our mission in Wave. Naruto still remembered how she looked in that swimsuit. Really, she was surprised by that, she didn't think she had done anything to really get his attention that day. It wasn't like she wore a flashy suit like the other girls or had done anything out of the ordinary. 
Naruto was lost on thought about that day, yeah when I saw you dancing on the water with the others playing tag I realized you were the girl I had been thinking about since I saw her in wave that one night when, he cut himself off as he realized his mistake. He had been so lost in the memory he hadn't realized that he shouldn't have said that part. Hanata listened but was confused, girl in wave, but there was no girl in wave. Well he mentioned seeing that girl dance on the water and, oh no. Hanata knew what he meant now, how he had seen her in a late night training session on the water. She had stripped down to prevent her clothing from getting wet but he hadn't known it had been her. That meant that he had not only seen her naked but had realized it had been her. She pulled away and turned to face him, her face was all red but this time from embarrassment. In fact she felt like she wanted to crawl under a rock and die from embarrassment. I, I didn't really see anything, and I didn't do it on purpose. Naruto tried to think of what to say, what could you say to something like that? Then he noticed that she hadn't moved, not even her face. He waved a hand in front of her eyes but nothing happened. Ah, Hanata-chan. The next thing he knew she once again fainted, only this time forward. He missed catching her with his hands as her head landed right into his crotch. Well more of her forehead did as he gave loud grunt of pain. Ow, that hurt Hanata-chan. Unfortunately that wasn't all the bad luck he had, Hiashi was walking by the room to check up on them. Of course he trusted his daughter, but still he was father. He also wanted to see how Naruto was taking the news, the boy would one day have to prove himself worthy in the eyes of the elders if he planned to keep their relationship going with his daughter. That was when he heard and groaned from Naruto and something about his daughter. He pulled open the door to see what was going out and froze. There on her bed, his daughter was bent forward, her head between the boy's legs as it looked to Hyashi that he was doing something very inappropriate with her. Naruto Hataki, Hyashi said coldly as the boy looked up in surprise. You dare take such liberties with my eldest daughter. Naruto blinked in confusion until he looked down and noticed how things looked. He got a slight nosebleed at the thought but quickly realized that her father looked livid. Not surprising, he walked in on what looked like Hanata was doing something too adult with him, right after he said they might not be a couple later on. So Naruto quickly looked at his options, and did what any sensible boy in this situation would do. He quickly got up and jumped out of Hanata's, thankfully, open window. Hiashi however was quick to follow, as anyone still up and around would for many years remember the night the clan head was chasing around the blonde boy, with cursing the boy with thousands of ways to die while the boy proclaimed his innocence the entire time. Village rooftops. Hayat didn't know how much longer he could keep this cat and mouse game up. He had to report what he had heart but that Suna Ninja was a smart one. He kept him from getting close to an escape route. Hayat could just yell for help but he was currently hiding in the shadows and that would alert the ninja to his location. Then he might end up dead and they would only find his corpse. He didn't really mind dying, although he knew his girlfriend would take it hard. She may be an anbu and tough but she was still a woman. The thought of her made him hope he could get out of this, he didn't want to meet her in the next world if he got himself killed. So far he had been lucky and sticking to hiding and running but he knew sooner or later that guy would find him. Where was a Jonan, or a NBU when you really needed them? If the old Uchiha police force had still been around at least they would have a decent patrols at night for him to run into. If he got out of this alive he would seriously think about suggesting a higher nighttime patrol. Well he couldn't go into some civilian's home, they wouldn't stand a chance and he couldn't have hostages used against him. All the people he knew didn't live close by of all his rotten luck. Hayat however couldn't wait any longer, he saw a rooftop that could take him to the back alleys, he might get more luck on the ground. Problem was, it was in open space. It took him a few moments but he decided to risk it. Hayat jumped out and pushed his muscles as fast as they would go, he was only 10 feet away from the drop into the alley. For a moment he had hoped that he would make it, but the whistling sound of a kunai made him stop. Several of the ninja weapons landed in his path and he cursed. He pulled the katana that he carried as he turned to face his opponent. Back he stood there looking at the younger man, there was a fierce determination in his eyes and he had to admit, the man never gave up. He could respect that, but respect or not he had a mission to do. I applaud you boy, you gave me a good chase but it ends here, Back he told him. You act like it's already over, Hayat said as he rushed forward. Leaf style, dance of the crescent moon. 
Baki watched at the young man jumped up and then split into two parts, he was wondering which was the real one and which was the illusion but then he sensed a third motion above him. The two were both fakes he suddenly realized as the real head came from the sky. The blade hit into Baki's protective vest thankfully and the light armor managed to catch the sword. Impressive, Baki smiled at the boy. To be able to pull off a move like that at your age is very impressive. But now it's my turn, you should have aimed for my head or cut off a limb instead of going for my armor. Hey, it tried to pull his blade free but it was stuck, the armor looked light but it was thicker than he anticipated. He tried to move but he saw the Suna ninja's hand have a slight distortion around it. It was a wind attack of that he was sure. He knew how dangerous wind attacks could be but it was already too late, at this range he couldn't dodge it, and he didn't have any skills to block. Wind style, wind raises, Baki said as many different blades made of wind sliced into Hayat's body. Baki looked down at the bleeding man, he had to admit that the man had skills but not good enough to defeat him. From the wounds back he could see that the man would bleed to death but he couldn't let the slim possibility that the man might survive long enough to warn others. He pulled out a kunai ready to finish it off when he heard a noise approaching him. Get back here. A male voice was heard. I'm telling you it's all a misunderstanding. A boy's voice was heard. Baki cursed his luck, they were coming right this way too. He slipped into the shadows if he had to he might have to deal with them as well. Three bodies in one night wouldn't be good, it would really alert the village that something was wrong with that many dead. Naruto had been running with everything he had, it hadn't been his fault but was Hanata's father going to listen to him. Hell no, he was going to kill him. So Naruto had no choice but to run, now he had run before from people chasing him, usually from his pranks but in all honesty those didn't have Hyashi's reasons to catch him. For a guy that spent most of his time overseeing a clan, he was in great shape. That was bad news for Naruto, and even worse how could he hide? Those eyes of Hyashi's were better than Hanata or Neji, unless he could think of something he was truly screwed. He risked a glance behind him as they ran over the rooftops, to check to see how far away the man was, not far enough away for Naruto's comfort. Unfortunately this was a bad move to make, he hadn't been watching his step as he stumbled on something and crashed to a halt on the rooftop he was currently on. He knew he was dead now, the Hugo leader would catch him now that he had stopped. He sighed and he pushed himself around to face his fate when he froze. There was enough light to see what, or more to that matter, who he had tripped over. It was the guy from the last part of the exam, but he was all cut up and bleeding all over the place. He had forgotten all about Hyashi when the man landed. Hyashi was going to punish the boy right there until he noticed that Naruto was over the body of a fellow leaf ninja. As a man of priorities he knew which would come first, but he gave Naruto a hard look, he would deal with the boy later. Naruto get help and fast, he won't make it without immediate medical attention. He said as he bent down and using his own robes, started to fashion bandages. He didn't know much other than the basic first aid for field dressings but he hoped it would be enough to give the man some more time. Naruto didn't even blink an eye as he quickly went for help. Baki saw all of this and scowled, it was just bad luck for him. He could see that the man was a Hugo even in the low light, but from the robes he guessed main house, plus the fact the forehead was bare. That usually meant the better Hugo fighters but he wasn't sure if he should stay or leave. He needed to finish off the leaf ninja but he heard how the Hugo could see all around them and through objects. The boy was also going to help, he couldn't get the boy as he couldn't leave the target and the target was now protected. In a long fight more people would come and he would be exposed. He took stock of the situation, the leaf ninja was unconscious and still might not survive. He decided to pull back and let the leaf spy handle things. If the man lived then the spy could infiltrate the hospital easier than he could and finish the job. He slipped away quietly to avoid the Hugo using his bloodline to spot him. Kanoa Hospital. The Hockage was an old man but at times like this he truly felt his age, when the young are injured or killed it reminds him of all those that fell before over the years. At the moment he was in a hallway with Hyashi. After Hyashi and Naruto managed to get help and bring Hayat to the hospital it had been looking grim. The man had so many injuries and had lost so much blood, it was true that medial jutsu could do wonders that even doctors that couldn't use chakra could do, and it still had limits. It also wasn't like his old student Sunid was still around either. Ever since she left the medical field had lost someone that could have tough so much to the next generation. 
Although Kanoa's medical ninja were top of the line thanks to her earlier work, there was still room to grow. After Hyashi had left, the Hokage had been given the details, that night he hadn't slept very well and even now the lack of sleep showed. Hayat had been at death's door the entire night and as he came to the hospital in the morning he had checked up on the man. So there was nothing to be done then, Hyashi stated as he was told that Hayat had passes away in the night. The Hokage sighed, none, the wounds were too bad for him to survive for long. That is why I called for you and Naruto, as the only witnesses I need to know if there was anything he said or anything you saw that would tell us who did this, and why. Although what were you two doing out at night anyway? Hyashi to his credit didn't show any emotion on his face given the reasons why they had been out there. After everyone he had gone home last night to his frantic daughter. Apparently she had asked what had happened and why Naruto wasn't around, she heard the story of her father chasing Naruto for some reason. So after a very long and embarrassing talk, he found out that Naruto hadn't made his daughter do something inappropriate. Although the boy would have to be watched just in case that he got it into his head that he could take liberties with his daughter before a deadline was set. He would have to make it known that in no uncertain terms, that Hanata would remain, pure, until she was married. And as head of Clan Huga he would see to that and heaven protect anyone that tried to stop that. It was a private manner that has been resolved for the most part, Hyashi said not wanting to go into detail. The Hokage gave him a look but didn't press the matter, he got the feeling it was unimportant to these events and were of a personal nature. Normally he would be curious but not with something like this hanging over their heads. It was very troubling, there was an ill wind blowing in the village, he could feel it in his old bones but where it was coming from, and what it brought he didn't know. Down the hallway another figure was lurking, Kabuto had heard the report from Baki and he was disappointed in the Suna ninja for not making sure the job was done. Now he had to see if Hayat not only lived but spoke to anyone. The problem was getting in there he could dress up as an Anbu, that was easiest to slip in after taking one out. But two deaths this close together would make everyone go on high alert. He had tried to sneak in several times but Anbu were everywhere in teams. He had first tried to sabotage the operation his medical skills were good enough to do that unnoticed. But he couldn't slip in, by the time he had got to the hospital it had already been underway and anyone else just walking in would have been noticed. He had tried later to sneak into the intensive care room, there were many little things he could have done to make it look like the man just hadn't survived the surgery. But the place was too well guarded he couldn't even get close, at least not without killing anyone. If Orokimaru's plans were ruined things would not go well, the man did not tolerate failure. He felt someone walk up behind him and quickly turned around and put on his, mask, of the innocent little genin. He was surprised to see Naruto Hataki of all people walking up the hallway. The young masked boy looked at him and seemed to get happier. Hey, Kabuto-san, Naruto hadn't expected to run into the white-haired genin. He felt bad that the older boy had to drop out of yet another Chunin exam. Plus he never got to see how strong Kabuto was either. What are you doing here? Oh a friend of mine was injured and I just though to check in. What about you? Oh, the old man wanted to speak to me about, well something, Naruto didn't go into detail. That night had been one crazy night but the body covered in blood had been something he wouldn't forget. Well I better not keep him waiting, plus I'm missing out on training, bye I hope your friend gets better. Kabuto smiled and waved it off as he slipped against the wall like he belonged there. With luck if they didn't go anywhere maybe he could pick something up in the hallway. He had been listening earlier to the Hokage and the head of the Huga clan before Naruto showed up. Naruto froze when he saw Hyashi there next to the Hokage he gulped and started to look for exits. The windows didn't open in the hallway so unless he wanted to break them, which would get him in trouble with the hospital staff, they were out. He saw a linen cart so maybe he could hide in that until the man was gone. Or slip into another room, as long as the man didn't use his eyes to look for him through objects, Naruto had various options. Ah, there you are Naruto. The Hokage said noticing the black and orange clad boy. Naruto winced, knowing that he was screwed. Hyashi now saw him, there was no way to hide now and the man was fast. No room to really dodge in the hallway either, yeah he felt like his life was nearing its end. His face went pale as the head of the Huga walked slowly towards him. All those threats of death came back into Naruto's young mind. Well, it wasn't so bad a life. Had a great dad, nice family, good friends and I had a really cute girlfriend. 
Naruto prepared himself for the afterlife, wishing that he could have at least became Hokage, or maybe at least second base with Hanata, maybe third. Home run when they were old enough, oh well, life didn't always get you what you wanted and he really wished he made a will out. Hyashi stared down at the boy with an expressionless face. Although on his return his daughter had explained everything, he was inclined to believe her. After all she couldn't lie to really save her life, but that was besides the point. He needed to make sure that the boy knew his place, he may like the boy but that didn't mean Naruto could ever take liberties with his daughter. He needed to ensure that if thoughts like that ever entered the boy's mind, he would remember this moment. He leaned down so only Naruto would hear what he was going to say. I will refrain from killing you, for the moment. My daughter explained but let this moment be perfectly clear in your mind. If I ever even suspect that you actually try anything like what I thought was going on. I have a large amount of land, and the only people that could see through the ground to where a body could be buried, all of them are under my command. Keep that in mind. Naruto looked up and nodded quickly as suddenly images of him being buried somewhere in the Huga compound came to his mind. Now let's not keep the hockage waiting, he said as he turned around and walked back to the leader of the village. Naruto followed looking like a scolded dog, and a bit paler. As they came up to the hockage they were to give a report on what happened. Mainly it wasn't much just that they stumbled upon his body. Hey it had been in no condition to talk about what had happened, so it was still a major mystery. While they were talking a medic took in a gurney where the body would be placed and taken to the morgue. Let me see him. A female voice yelled out. Damn it I want to see for myself. The voice was of Yugao Azuki, a beautiful young woman with long purple hair, she was also Hayat's girlfriend and lover. She had been on an Anbu assignment and had only just heard the news. She needed to see for herself the truth that her love was dead, murdered by the sounds of it. She was currently being held by two hospital staff. Let her through, the Hockage said as the two staff members let go immediately. She paused only for a moment before running into the room, a moment later a wail of anger, pain and of loss filled the air. It soon turned into crying as those in the hallway turned as if trying to give her space for her grief and pain. The Hockage sighed hearing the poor young woman, whose heart was just shattered. Death is never an easy thing to face when it is the one you love. No, it isn't, Hyashi stated remembering the death of his own wife. Although it had been years since she had passes away the hole in his life had never been filled. For Naruto he remained silent, he couldn't stand listening to that woman crying. It brought back the memory of when Hanata had lost her mother and she had cried in his arms. Is this the thing that would happen to her if he died one day, or what if she was killed? What if anyone he knew would be killed one day and then what? He knew that death came to anyone, he had liked Hanata's mother and she had died. Kabuto grinned as he pushed his glasses back up, it would seem that maybe all wasn't lost. Although he didn't like the fact that the man's body would be taken to Anoiki Yamanaka, if he could find anything in the memories that still lingered deep inside of the brain, it wouldn't go well. The body would be put into the morgue to keep the deterioration slowed, but the body wouldn't be as guarded. It would be much simpler to go into there and ensure the brain wouldn't be accessed. A simple little injection that would make the brain turned into jelly. Minus ten days later. Water style, aqua tower. Sakura's voice rang out in the training area. A pillar of water shot out of the ground as it moved forward to attack several training dummies. The water tore the straw scarecrow-like beings into pieces. Sakura was sweating and breathing hard from the training but she was smiling. That had been the first time she had used that jutsu perfectly like she had. It hadn't been easy to learn water manipulation, and even harder to learn how to make water when there was no nearby source. Although there was water in the human body and in the air it was dangerous. Using too much of your own water that reside inside of your body could apparently kill you from dehydration. Using the moisture in the air took time and more chakra. But still, the two women training her and Hanata had made the two girls train in how to use the water style jutsus with little to no water to draw on. Water style, water shockwave. Hanata called out as a spiral of water was formed from the water in the air. The spiral moved and hit a large rock as it exploded on contact. Nice one Hanata, Sakura said to the dark haired girl. Hanata smiled at Sakura's encouragement, over the last few days they had spent a lot of time helping each other out. Hanata felt a sense of strength from how sure Sakura always seemed to be, at least in the training. Not bad girls, Kuranai smiled proudly at the two of them. 
Keep this up and you too will have some major surprises for your teams. What do you think Anko? Anko who had been sitting in a tree watching them jumped down and walked over to the two girls. Out of the two women, Anko was always the hardest, she didn't believe in being gentle in training. She never did anything that would hurt the girls permanently or land them into the hospital. But she wasn't gentle either, she pushed the girls because she felt they could take it. So far she hadn't been too disappointed, but she tried not to show it too much. It's getting better, Anko simply said to the two young girls, at any rate I think it's time for a break before you girls collapse. That had been music to their ears as they both felt like collapsing at that moment. As they rested in the grass both girls' minds went to thinking on the future. For Hanata, she was thinking of her future with Naruto. Ever since her father gave him that warning about what the elders could do, it worried her. She couldn't think of her life without Naruto being a part of it. Now that they were a couple she felt like she would rather cut an arm off than lose him. He made her happy, made her feel confident in herself and she felt like she could do anything. He was a source of great strength and inspiration for her, plus she trusted no one else more so than she did. Sakura's mind was occupied by two things the first was the upcoming matches. She wasn't sure how the training with the others were doing but she was sure they were training hard. She needed to be ready for her own match Sakura hadn't seen Ino since that day of the preliminary matches. She was sure that Ino was doing better now, but no matter what she would get even for Ino. The other thing her mind had been on as always was Sasuke. She sighed in a bit of depression ever since she had made the deal with him she had kept her word. She never once asked him out again but she still wanted to. Sakura looked over to Hanata and felt a bit of envy of the other girl. She had at least got the boy she had been crushing on, while Sakura was still behind in that point. Hey Hanata, can I ask you something? Of course. How did you get Naruto to ask you out? Sakura asked the girl plainly, she figured that it had to be Naruto to take the initiative as Hanata couldn't muster the courage to do something like that. If she could, she would have asked a long time ago. Hanata blushed as she found out the real reason Naruto noticed her, she didn't think telling Sakura to train naked at night and having Sasuke see her was the best thing to say. Plus it was too embarrassing to confess to that. She had been thinking about that, on the one hand it wasn't the best way to get a boy to notice her. Then she remembered how Naruto couldn't stop talking about the mysterious girl. It had made Naruto see her as a girl and not just as a friend. But she had no way to tell Sakura how she had done it and the other girl was waiting for an answer. I think she just used her body, Anko chimed in as she had been listening in. Anko, Kuranai snapped. Although she too had been listening she didn't like Anko implying such a thing. Hey I know the brat better than you do, Anko said in her defense. She then struck a pose to help her next point. Besides a woman's body is her main weapon against a man. Don't you remember that as one of the private lessons in school only for the girls? Now both Sakura and Hanata were blushing, there were certain things that Kunoiki learned differently than the boys. Flower arrangement had been one, but the more embarrassing were the ones when a professional courtesan came in for an introduction to seduction. That had been extremely embarrassing day for those girls. There are better ways at getting a man than that, Kuranai said to Anko clearly not amused. Says the woman that's still single, Anko stuck her tongue out at the older and now slightly fuming woman. How much longer are you going to wait for Asuma to make the first step anyway? Asuma, as in Asuma Sensei. Sakura looked up in surprise at the red-eyed woman. I, I didn't know that Kuranai Sensei liked Asuma Sensei. Hanata spoke up in surprise. Kuranai felt her cheeks heat up as Anko made this public. She was about to deny it but Anko beat her to it. Are you kidding? She's totally has had a crush on that guy since she was still a Chunin. Kind of pathetic really, at least when I started to like Kakashi as more than a friend, I did something about it. And I got what I wanted, Anko smirked at Kuranai who was now blushing much like Hanata. Sakura thought about this, Anko was always so confident and she took no prisoners. She was a great kunoiki that Sakura had come to respect and she did get Naruto's dad. If there was one woman that could help her with Sasuke, then Anko was the person for it. Sakura quickly got to her knees as she bowed her head to Anko, please Anko sensei, can you help me with getting Sasuke to like me? Anko was surprised by the girl's request but she couldn't help but also feel a sense of perverse pleasure in molding the girl. 
Karen I sighed as she saw the look in her friend's eye she had seen that look many times and felt a bit sorry for the girl. Anko asked Sakura to explain everything, she went into the things she had tried, the deal she made even how jealous she was when Sasuke took notice of Tenten. Anko asked for a better explanation on what kind of person Tenten was. Anko thought about it all of it and soon to came to a conclusion. Okay first things first, you made one hell of a bad first impression, Anko said bluntly as Sakura hung her head feeling even more depressed. From what I can tell the kid hates, fan girls, they just annoy him and you went along with the pack in school. Big mistake there as he placed you into the same grouping, but there is hope. You haven't been like that anymore so maybe his opinion of you has changed. He also seems to like the more mature types and strong girls. Given that you said he wants to restore his clan, he'll want to have a strong woman to do it. Now in order to get him to notice you, you'll have to show him that you're more mature and stronger. Thankfully we're working on the stronger part now and you can show him that in the matches. Now you'll have to work on your personality a bit, you have to come off as more confident, make the boy want to chase you instead of you chasing him. Last thing, dot you need a new look. I I do. Sakura looked down at her red dress. You're not a little girl anymore you're a ninja and it's time to dress the part. So after training I'm taking you shopping to get you looking like a real ninja. As well as making him take notice of you as a woman. Sakura liked the sound of that, if she looked more mature it might help. Anko looked to Hanata, maybe we can do something for Hanata, get the brat a little hot under the collar. Hell I saw what you looked like in a bathing suit I wish I had developed like you did when I was your age. Anko, you are not dressing up my student, Kuran I said sternly with her friend. Hanata is a proper girl and I will not have you dressing her in anything else. Are you making a comment about me or something? Anko asked a little angry. She hated it when people made very negative comments on her look. She liked the functionality of her choice in clothing as well as the physical appeal. Besides I'm not saying anything drastic, just maybe lose the jacket or at least get a slimmer one. As the two adults started to argue over fashion it left their students wondering which one had the right idea. Kerr and I dressed in a more exotic look but it didn't show too much, while Anko dressed in a provocative manner but it still held function. At any rate it was a while before they started training again that day. Later that night, Gara had been very bored lately there was no real reason for him to train. He had never found anyone that could challenge him so there was no need to get stronger. He was already the strongest there was, even adults were afraid of him and they were right to be afraid of him. He was the walking death of the desert. He didn't sleep either, since the demon within would devour his mind. The sand was the only thing that he could trust it had been the only thing that protected him, that was there for him constantly. It had been his mother for his life, already wrapped up in its comforting embrace and he would feed his mother the blood of his enemies. But there was someone else out there whose blood called out to him. He wasn't sure if he could wait until the end of the month. His mind kept going back to that one match, the man that had tried to drain the chakra out of the masked genin, the one called Naruto Hataki. The screams of that man still rang in his mind, it was a glorious sound. But Gara knew what had happened he knew what that masked boy was. He was like him, he had a demon inside as well, he could just tell. This was the first time he met someone like him, someone that interested him this much. He would have to kill that boy he felt every part of his body screaming out for the blood of Naruto Hataki. Naruto groaned as he walked home, today had been even a harder day than normal. After Jiraiya had found him practicing that trick with the water balloons that his dad taught him the old man hadn't left him alone. He didn't really see why at first, he kept the practice of that training test ever since his dad showed his team how shape manipulation worked. But at any point whatever interest was in the old man was gone as they continued on their training. Although the old pervert left him alone for some time, mainly for more, research, so Naruto was left to experiment, and it had been his shape training that made Naruto remember that one move in the forbidden scroll he and Hanata had been tricked into stealing. He remembered that one jutsu that if done wrong would rip apart someone's hand. Wind jutsus were apparently dangerous but what if he could find a way to control the shape of the chakra? It was then that he had begun his experiments and when Jiraiya had found him. Flashed back a few days ago. Naruto stood by the river as he tried to figure out his new move. His own dad came up with an original jutsu at about his age, then again his dad was a genius. 
but that never stopped Naruto, so he had been trying to create a move similar to what he had seen. He wished that he had read that scroll more, he kind of forgot a few parts. He had been trying with hand seals and the balloon training but so far nothing. Come on, it can't be that hard to create a jutsu is it? Naruto said as he tried something else. He closed his eyes as he thought of drawing out his wind chakra. He held the image in his mind, then Naruto extended his hands slightly apart and the palms facing each other. He slowly began to picture the wind chakra moving through his body and going into his hands. Next step was to force it into the shape of the balloons. For a minute he thought that he had just started to get somewhere. All right I'm doing it, I'm, B-O-O-O-O-O-M. The explosion of the mismatched chakras ended up exploding in his hands he was sent flying back as he hit a tree. He had blacked out after that and it wasn't until he felt someone shaking him and someone calling his name. Hey kid, Naruto wake up. Naruto groaned as he felt his arms tingling like they had been numb for a bit. He slowly opened his eyes as he looked up to see Sky, and Jiraiya looking down from him. Oh good you're not dead, the man grinned as he looked over the area. What the hell were you doing? I thought you were supposed to be training with the summoning and calling out your other chakra to help give you a boost. I was trying to make up my own move, Naruto explained what he had planned to do but somehow it had backfired. Kid do you have any idea how dangerous that was? Jiraiya couldn't believe the kid would do something so dangerous. Although he had to admit, for the kid to try something so advanced on his own was impressive. Look kid, you're nowhere near ready for using such an advanced move. Hell, what you were trying to do was infuse chakra into an unfinished technique. Unfinished technique. Jiraiya nodded, yeah that thing your dad showed you is actually the first step of training to use a different technique. Although you got the first part down, it would take too long to train you to use it. He noticed Naruto's downed expression. How about this, for the last week I'll teach you how to use that jutsu that is similar to the one that you were trying to recreate. Really, you can teach me that. Naruto said excited but then he remembered that was still some time off. But what about before then? Well you still have trouble with the damn chakra you can't seem to access the foxes at will. I have an idea how to fix it but it's pretty hard and I'm not sure you're up for it. The Sanin told the young boy. I can do anything, so bring it on Ero Senen. Present. Man that had been a mistake, Naruto thought to himself remember what had happened two days ago. Stupid old pervert, making me do all that stuff and then throwing me off a damn cliff. Then that stupid boss toad making me ride him for the entire day in order to be his, minion, and then there was the fox. The stupid fox was a big ugly jerk too. Naruto had been pushed off a cliff by his teacher just so that he was put into a life or death moment, he had gone into his mind for the second time. When he got up to the cage he had remembered a dream about being in that dark place before. Turns out it hadn't been a dream and that had been a memory of when he had been stabbed. He still remembered a bit of that day, he had always thought it had been just a nightmare when he passed out. But the fox had remembered him from when he had been a child, well this time he wasn't afraid of the stupid thing and told him so right to his big hairy face. Although Naruto didn't like using the fox's chakra, he wanted to use his own strength but he would use it if he needed to, but only as a last resort. Now he was dragging himself home dreaming of his nice soft bed. Too bad his dad was still camping out wherever he was training Sasuke. He was also pumped he couldn't wait to see what Sasuke and Sakura had learned and what they would do in the finals. That thought gave him a bit more energy as he made his way through the dark streets. Although ever since he had found Hayat's body he kept looking around into the shadows. Something was wrong, even he could tell that but he didn't know what. He told Jiraiya about everything but the old man just had this serious and deep thinking face. The man never said anything about it but Naruto got a feeling that the old man was thinking something was going on as well. It was only because of that heightened sense of alert that he felt it, the killing intent. Naruto although his body was sore and tired he moved quickly. He spun around with the hand on the hilt of the sword on his back. He was surprised to see 10 meters away was the Suna ninja, Gara. The other boy really made Naruto nervous, the whole boy's demeanor just screamed out danger. It was a long moment before the other boy spoke up in that gravelly whispered voice of his. So you're this village's container. Gara spoke as he looked at the boy. So far he wasn't impressed and he could feel the fear coming off the other boy. It kind of disgusted by it actually, to think that another demon container was like this. 
Naruto was shocked by what the other boy said, how the hell did you know that? Naruto really did want to know, it was a secret, hell he didn't find out what he was until he graduated. But this boy from another village knew. Gara stared at the other boy, he wanted to just call up on his sand and kill the boy now. But he was told to wait, wait until the matches started up again. He didn't want to wait though, this boy was his prey and the sand called for his blood. It took a lot of willpower to quell the bloodthirst in him. How the two people that are the same can be so different? I can't figure out why you're not more like me, aren't you hated and feared for what you are? This village should fear you with good reason, you should be able to destroy this village but you're just weak. But at any rate, I look forward to killing you Naruto Hataki. You'll be the first of our kind that I'll be able to kill. Gara grinned a maniacal grin as the sand swirled around him and soon Naruto was left alone in the street. Naruto just stood there transfixed as the boy's words rang in his head. So much alike, of our kind, does he mean that? Naruto paused as the words slowly sank into his mind. And Gara's words would echo into his mind for the rest of the training that month. And when the day came for the final matches he wasn't sure what he would feel the next time he meet Gara. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.